And welcome to State of the Eagles, David Moulton with Athletics Director Ken Cavanaugh. Where do you want to start? I mean, at one time, all 15 teams have been playing here in the past year plus. You want to start with the fall? Sure. I mean, really, it's just kind of hopefully back to normalcy. Oh, from your lips to God's <laughs> ears, let me tell you. All right. Uh, how about volleyball? A great season, arguably the best in school history, which is saying something. Yeah, I mean, what Matt has continued to do, he's now coach of the year three of the last four seasons, and um, not just in regards to uh, winning championships in the conference, which we've done uh, regularly within reason over the last several years, but uh, to compete at the level where we were number 31, the best we've ever been in the RPI, uh, which then showed itself and where we were seated in the NCAA tournament when we were uh, able to take care of business, beating Jacksonville State in a great match here in Alico, um, and then to go in, play Texas Tech down 2-0, and, uh, which really things didn't look very good at that point. Uh, we found a way to win the third set and then really turned things around on its head and the fourth and fifth set won very uh, convincingly. So uh, then we get to play Wisconsin. We're in a position where you're 6'9", six, 6'8", six, front line. I mean, you don't see that in men's basketball in some games. And, uh, you know, Wisconsin has a phenomenal team and in a position where playing on their home court, uh, we played very well, but uh, we're, we lost 3 nothing. But in the total points, I think we outscored UCLA, who later played them in the tournament. So um, what Matt continues to do, the number of individuals on his team that continue to win the highest awards, uh, player of the year, freshman of the year, and so forth, has continued to show not only great recruiting, but in turn uh, competing on the court when they get here. Well, arguably the greatest season in program history with 27 wins, second time making it to the tournament, winning a match for the second time. And you could argue the Texas Tech win was the greatest in school history in that, I mean, you're down 2-0 in the NCAA tournament. There are not a lot of teams that come back and win a five-setter. No, and again, I think that showed the uh, senior leadership of this program uh, helped by COVID where we've got an older team uh, than we'd normally have with uh, Courtney in particular, Van Lu coming back for an extra year as our uh, all-time leading kills and in a position where they didn't really uh, give up on themselves. And that was the most important part. They're the ones playing on the court. So it was really fun. Uh, I was blessed to have been there and uh, really an opportunity for us to build off of. Well, when you have a great team and a great season, you likely have a lot of individual honors. Well, and rightfully so. Uh, as I mentioned, Mac got coach of the year. Uh, Aaron Sh Shoemaker was in a position where she won, uh, repeated as the player of the year, which on top of it is Courtney Van Lu, her teammate, won it the two years prior. Uh, and just really within reason, when you're playing as well as we are, um, they, there's only so many individuals that are going to get the votes because they spread them out. Now we have 12 teams in the league and so forth. But uh, Chelsea Lockie, again, was first team all conference. Uh, Dana Axner, who has been the libero of the year, and in my opinion, was it again. Uh, she made second team, and then we had individuals such as uh, Skylar English, uh, local product from uh, Baron Collier in, in Naples, wound up uh, being on the freshman team. And then uh, uh, Julia Lentz, who got hurt uh, midway through the eighth son schedule and really was missed uh, with her athleticism, she made second team. So, uh, and there's other teammates that probably could have been uh, cited as well, but uh, very much so rewarded for what they did. And then if you take it beyond just the court, um, we were in a position where we had Aaron and um, I want to say Dana Axe are both made all academic and then taking even further Dana who was an academic all-american last year she and Courtney Van Lu were rated in the top 30 in the country for what they call a senior class award and what that does is takes in everything your athleticism what you've done in the classroom your leadership uh, and they were two only two schools in the country Wisconsin uh, who we played in the NCAA tournament and made it to the final four was in a position where they had two we had two they narrowed it to 10 and Courtney Van Lu is still right now under consideration for the top 10 for the biggest award from an overall standpoint. So a remarkable season on and off the court for the volleyball program. It was also very successful seasons for both soccer teams. Let's start with the women. They won their division, had a real shot to be a Sun champion this year. Yeah, our, the East Division was really the strongest of the two. North Florida, who won the, the league last year, uh, amongst other teams, Kennesaw State. And uh, we wound up, when things were uh, set, at the number one seed from our division. Uh, Lipscomb wound up winning the West. And uh, unfortunately, as, as soccer can be, you can dominate a game as we did in our quarterfinals. And uh, you go to those words, penalty kicks. Oof. And uh, once you get there, it, it's up for grabs. And it was uh, unfortunate that we did not uh, pass through. But uh, we did tie for the overall, basically, 
basically a uh, championship for the regular season, won our division. And uh, with that, Louis Lilback uh, was voted the A-Sun Player of the Year. Uh, we had a couple other individuals, uh, Kaja Lang and uh, Ashley Bay, were both named first team all-conference. So it was a very successful year. We played a great schedule. We wound up having the two best home games in terms of non-conference in the history of our program with both Florida and Florida State within several days of each other. Uh, FSU wound up going on to win the national championship. So what Coach Blankenship continues to do, not only in terms of with our program in the A Sun, but the respect that he has for teams like that to come to our facility, which doesn't happen very often, it is certainly a credit to Jim. Well, he is an FGC legend, no doubt about it. I will say that FGCU's history with penalty kicks is beginning to rival England's men's squad. I mean, it is like two dirty words now in FGCU athletics. Penalty kicks. Yeah, it's it's... Again, it's a different way. It'd be like in basketball, I guess, going to foul shots at right. the end of the game. We haven't. Um, I also do want to mention Ashley Bretlinger, who is one of our captains, was named all academic for, for the A-Sun. So we appreciate everything that Ashley's done for our program. Uh, very good men's season. Remember, they had a great tournament run the year before, followed it up with an even more consistent season this year. Yeah, the hard part really was with um, in the element of uh, still working on COVID uh, scheduling. We only had 11 or 12 games. We did lose a game right off the bat early on. We were trying to just play an exhibition game. Uh, we finished as a third seed. The A-Sun has really uh, gained a lot of strength um, in terms of national. I think Lipscomb early in the season won at UCLA and San Diego. So amongst the teams, we finished third, and uh, we're in a position where we got uh, to the end of our quarterfinal uh, up. I think we played up in uh, central Arkansas, uh, and we were not out, but uh, the quality of the team was shown where Gustavo Vasconcelos, uh, our great goalkeeper for the third time in four years, was named Goalkeeper of the Year. Avanti Mullins, who wound up finishing uh, second all-time for us in both goals and points to our former All-American Albert Ruiz, and was named first-team all-conference, as was Ethan Dudley, who was the Defensive Player of the Year uh, in our spring schedule. And uh, So we had three first-teamers and, uh, again, showed the quality of what we have for our team. And um, hopefully next year, with uh, losing some really talented individuals, we'll be able to regroup and get back to Hopefully going to the NCAAs. Volleyball, both soccers, that takes us to cross country men and women. Yeah, again, uh, in a position where trying to compete amongst COVID and our depth issues, our women's side was really young and they dealt with a number of injuries and we look forward to uh, them getting back to full health uh, next year. On the men's side, they finished fifth of 12, which for some folks, they may not appreciate the fact that we, we deal with in cross country, we don't have full cross country and track teams and the scholarships and the numbers that other schools can throw at us uh, makes it difficult. So for us to finish fifth of 12, I was very proud of Cassandra and her team. Uh, we had a newcomer in and, uh, who made all, all a son and Oz uh, Humeda. He's a transfer from Virginia Tech, and uh, we're hoping maybe he can get back next year. But he finished as an all a son runner in his first year for us, and very proud of that.